Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all for the today's lecture. We will briefly look at uh, what we did last time. As you recall, we uh, started with uh, asymmetric epoxidation developed by Sharpless. And uh, we looked at how uh, the mnemonic device um, allows the allylic alcohol to be oriented in this particular fashion and depending on whether it is um, uh, L plus DET or, or L uh, D minus DET, we can get the corresponding epoxides and their uh, orientation or stereochemistry. In this fashion, these are two epoxy alcohols that can form. This one based on uh, plus uh, DET that is diethyl tartarate and this one by from the minus DET, uh, this is L plus and this is D minus. So uh, rest of the reaction conditions remain the same. And we also saw that not only uh, this kind of uh, prochiral allylic alcohols can be epoxidized under the Sharpless epoxidation conditions, but we can also take uh, racemic uh, allylic alcohol in which we have here say for example R and H or we have R in a in differently oriented fashion and uh, this particular um, racemic uh, molecule. So as we can see that if we write it here um, this R group uh, and this R group uh, in such a way that they are basically uh, enantiomers of each other. So they would be uh, available as a racemic molecule. And uh, if we carry out the reaction, we can carry out uh, basically a kinetic resolution in which one of them reacts uh, faster for epoxidation and the other one remains as allylic alcohol. So um, up to here we had seen and we also saw the mechanistic aspects of um, these reactions where how the dimeric species of the titanium uh, re, uh, catalyst allows the in this uh, orientation of the uh, epoxide to come from uh, lower side in case of plus DET and from the top side or the beta side when we use minus DET. So having uh, obtained such epoxy alcohols in very high enantiomeric purity in a very catalytic fashion, uh, we also saw the utility of uh, uh, molecular sieves to uh, remove water and uh, isopropanol from the reaction medium to make the reaction catalytic. Now what is the utility of these uh, epoxy alcohols in the synthetic uh, uh, area. Let us see that. Uh, so we have the epoxy alcohols uh, like this and uh, we can anticipate that there are essentially three uh, centers where the nucleophile can attack. Like for example, one position where nucleophile can attack if we are in a position to to make the hydroxy group as a leaving group, then the nucleophile can attack at the carbon number 1. Then it can attack on carbon number 2, uh, the epoxide can be opened uh, at uh, nucleophilic attack from uh, at the carbon number 2 and also uh, at the carbon number 3. It all depends on upon uh, various conditions. And uh, we will discuss that uh, uh, under what conditions such attacks are possible. But one thing which is very important is that uh, under basic conditions, these uh, epoxy alcohols undergo a kind of rearrangement called pain rearrangement. So uh, if we take, uh, for example, uh, 
the epoxy alcohol of this type when we react it with um, uh, a base such as uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and uh, we can anticipate that this epoxy alcohol should uh, uh, become uh, a particular anion by the base that we have used and then we can expect that this uh, particular O minus opens up the epoxide in an intramolecular fashion uh, and to give this epoxide. That means this negative charge from here will attack onto this carbon and the uh, carbon oxygen bond of the epoxide will break leading to this OH group in this fashion and the, um, the epoxide of course uh, remain will, will now be a terminal epoxide because we started with uh, an epoxide which was uh, having a position in the middle where on the one side we had this R1 and R2 group on the other hand we had the CH2OH and the H. But now uh, after the pain rearrangement the epoxide uh, has now become the uh, terminal epoxide and this terminal epoxide uh, is sterically less hindered compared to this epoxide. So if you look at the reactivity of uh, this epoxide and re compare the reactivity of this particular epoxide, the here the two carbons of the uh, epoxide um, end are both sterically hindered whereas here this is sterically more hindered and this is sterically less hindered. Therefore, the nucleophile can attack onto this carbon and then we can get the uh, in fact in this particular case the nucleophile is O minus OH minus and therefore we are getting the OH minus coming at this place uh, so at, at this place it should be actually. Uh, and the epoxide opens up to form the OH group like this. So therefore uh, you have the nucleophilic attack taking place onto this carbon and the carbon oxygen bond breaks to, to get the this and in this case you have an OH here. So uh, this is how the reaction occurs and of course we can, uh, we can write the um, diol or the triol uh, whichever way one wants to without actually changing the stereochemistry of the asymmetric center. So uh, this is uh, something as a very important uh, reaction where the utility of the uh, epoxy alcohol can be um, uh, looked at and uh, since the pain rearrangement allows the uh, conversion of one uh, type of epoxy to another type of epoxide. As you can see that both of them are essentially epoxy alcohols. Uh, in this case the epoxide uh, is not terminal whereas in this case it is terminal. So one can also anticipate that the same pain rearrangement can occur uh, from this OH under basic condition and that opens the epoxide and it goes back to this. That is why there is an equilibrium that is shown on this side. However, if uh, in the present uh, reaction conditions OH is a nucleophile but one can also take uh, any other nucleophile uh, or a precursor of a nucleophile and that particular nucleophile will preferentially attack onto this particular uh, end of the epoxide which is sterically less hindered. So this, this pain rearrangement um, followed by nucleophilic attack has been well exploited in the uh, organic synthesis. So let us take uh, a special case here. Uh, if we take a non-terminal epoxide now where the epoxy alcohol of this kind is uh, generated or formed or prepared or synthesized according to the Sharpless method and when we um, allow this reaction to uh, take place uh, in the presence of uh, sodium hydroxide. So we expect uh, this type of uh, opening to take place and generating the terminal epoxide of this type where the O minus 
attacks from the now as you can see that the epoxide here is uh, uh, beta oriented the carbon oxygen bond is beta oriented and therefore the O minus attacks from the alpha side. So, this is an alpha side attack. So, you have the this carbon oxygen bond is broken and the on the third carbon the carbon oxygen bond is beta oriented whereas the terminal epoxide the epoxidation is occurring from the alpha side opposite to the original epoxide which was beta. And to this now the OH minus which is what is a nucleophile in the reaction medium attaches to the carbon number 1 and this carbon oxygen bond is broken to form the uh, OH group here at the alpha oriented here at the beta oriented and of course we get the hydroxy group at the terminal end. Under these conditions uh, if uh, we also add uh, say for example phenyl SH as a reagent or a reactant in the in the medium then we can expect the uh, phenyl S minus forming. So, in place of this nucleophile we could expect that pH S minus can act as a nucleophile leading to the formation of such uh, thio compounds. Uh, these kinds of thio compounds are very important uh, and uh, as one can see very carefully that we have uh, this uh, asymmetric centers uh, of course there is also one asymmetric center here and we have functionality in which there is possibility of uh, hydrolyzing this particular uh, acetal moiety and we can generate two hydroxy groups here. So, we have uh, one hydroxy group coming here another hydroxy group coming here we already have the third one here and the fourth one here and the possibility of manipulating the carbon S bond and therefore leading to highly functionalized optically pure molecules. Let us take another example uh, of this type which is uh, uh, easily derived from a molecule of uh, this kind. Uh, so, one can start with this cis double bond where there is an allylic alcohol and uh, you can uh, carry out uh, whichever way one wants to have the epoxide uh, using L plus or D minus DET under Sharpless epoxidation conditions. So, having um, got the epoxide like this if we treat with potassium hydroxide and uh, say diethylamine. So, we could expect the anion to form at this center which attacks to open the epoxide and this terminal epoxide can form. Again as you can see that the carbon oxygen bond here was beta oriented and now since the oxygen minus is now reacting from the opposite side of the carbon oxygen bond therefore this is now alpha oriented to which now uh, diethylamine as a nucleophile can attack onto this particular carbon atom and when this bond opens here we get this diol which can be written up in this fashion without changing the stereochemistry and also we can write it in this way in a zigzag uh, fashion where we can rotate it in, in this particular path uh, here so that it points below. If it points below the hydroxy group will go um, in a different uh, orientation than what it was in here. So, basically we are uh, allowing the carbon, carbon bond rotation around here. So, this is the product that is formed uh, after the uh, reaction has done uh, has been done. So, you, you start with a cis uh, allylic alcohol and we get the product like this via essentially two steps one epoxidation followed by opening of the epoxide and a nucleophilic attack in, in one step uh, and with a predictable uh, stereochemistry in 
all the reactions. So this is a very very important uh, uh, transformation and one can carry out uh, such uh, transformations in, in very um, uh, under mild conditions and get high yield, uh, high, not only high chemical yield but also high optical yield. Now if the same epoxide is reacted with uh, say uh, butane thiol uh, and the, as basic conditions we, uh, we expect uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, particular uh, molecule to form and uh, when this diol is reacted with uh, uh, a source of uh, Me plus this is called Mirwein reagent uh, and it is a useful uh, uh, source of methyl plus uh, especially for the methylation of uh, sulfur here. And uh, once that is uh, done you can imagine that uh, when it is treated with base you can deprotonate the OH group here and that can go and attack onto this to remove this carbon sulfur bond because now this path has become a living group. And then of course we can expect the uh, epoxide to form in this way uh, and then this allows the normal opening or the terminal epoxide opening the way we have seen in other cases. Uh, if we take an epoxide of this type then uh, even sodium borohydride has been found um, to react uh, with this uh, as I have um, earlier mentioned that certain, certain uh, conditions in certain cases sodium borohydride can uh, do a re reduction of epoxides. For example here under the basic conditions the uh, pain rearrangement takes place and the anion uh, will form from the uh, opposite to the carbon oxygen bond. So, uh, this is alpha oriented therefore this is now beta oriented. And when this uh, gets reduced with sodium borohydride here then this bond opens up and we get this product which can be written up uh, in this fashion and of course we can then turn around and expect that the orientation of this molecule having a zigzag uh, 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 possibility being like this. So this is how the uh, uh, epoxy um, alcohols are uh, used in uh, various kinds of transformations. Uh, we have few more cases uh, for example we can also start with uh, this epoxide and uh, treat with sodium cyanide uh, under basic conditions in water at 80 degrees centigrade. So one can uh, expect anion formation to take place from here. So this particular carbon oxygen bond is alpha oriented therefore the attack takes place from the beta side to form this epoxide where this is beta oriented uh, and then uh, of course it is a terminal epoxide so CN minus reacts onto this particular carbon and then this carbon oxygen bond opens up to give the hydroxy group which is now beta oriented and then cyano and rest of the part which can be written up uh, in this fashion which now allows that if we take uh, say for example uh, H plus or under basic conditions uh, the H plus or under basic conditions followed by acidification can lead to the, the formation of the oxygen carbon bond eventually to give the to the lactone. Essentially what is happening is, is this is getting hydrolyzed or this is getting um, attacked by the uh, o minus and then hydrolyzed to the corresponding lactone. So one can prepare such kind of uh, lactones where there are two uh, asymmetric centers and we can get them in high enantiomeric purity. Now the other possibility is that uh, we can carry out the reaction without pain rearrangement. 
what is required for the pain rearrangement is a basic condition, is a strongly basic condition. So that the proton of the OH is deprotonated and O minus is formed which then opens intramolecularly the epoxide on the uh, next carbon of the molecule. But suppose if we take an epoxy alcohol of this type and treat with uh, uh, sodium azide uh, in the presence of ammonium chloride. Now ammonium chloride is very mildly acidic which uh, uh, allows uh, epoxide to be briefly protonated and then the nucleophile which is N3 minus uh, directly attacks onto this terminal epoxide and this carbon oxygen bond breaks to form the corresponding azido alcohol. Now this has not uh, required any basic condition and therefore the pn element does not take place. Now we have uh, uh, lithium uh, cuprates of this type which are uh, actually not uh, base, basic or uh, ionic enough to allow the deprotonation uh, and then opening to take place and therefore such a, re a reagent leads the attack at the terminal end and this is how the R prime group comes onto the terminal end of the double bond. Uh, we can also take this uh, lithium uh, acetylide of this type where the, uh, the uh, epoxide carbon is getting attached with this terminal um, particular acetylic, acetylenic part. And uh, we can also take uh, a reaction um, in, in, in such a direction that we can introduce another interesting functional group such as potassium cyanide in methanol. We can allow the op opening of the carbon epoxide bond, uh, oxygen bond to give to the corresponding cyanide which can of course be converted into different functional groups such as if we have a cyanide we can go to the corresponding COOH, we can also go to the corresponding CHO we can also go to the corresponding CH2, NH2. That is something that we discussed at the time when we were doing the reactions using dipole. Now attack at the uh, this epoxide at the carbon number 1 uh, can also take place uh, in, in a way that, uh, that uh, if we uh, convert the OH group of the epoxy alcohol to a living group and we do not have uh, any uh, strong uh, basic conditions then we can uh, allow the opening to take place the way we want it at the carbon number 1. For example under very mild condition with mild base such as pyridine tosyl chloride or methyl chloride we can convert the OH group without affecting uh, the epoxide to the corresponding tosylate or mesylate. So we are starting with this allylic alcohol and we are getting this uh, epoxy alcohol and we convert that epoxy alcohol to epoxy tosylate or mesylate. And now we have um, uh, nucleophiles such as uh, say, say for example we have I minus a good nucleophile or cuprate as a good nucleophile we can directly substitute the carbon tosylate or carbon mesylate bond to the corresponding I or R prime. We can also take uh, relatively uh, uh, soft nucleophiles such as PHS minus or PHSE minus and introduce carbon sulfur bond or a carbon selenium bond uh, or we can react it with sodium cyanoborohydride and uh, reduction takes place at the uh, carbon uh, bond, uh, carbon center where carbon tosylate or mesylate bond is there and that leads to the corresponding methyl group to form. So this is how the reactions uh, can be uh, carried out at the three uh, centers of the epoxide as we discussed we can uh, carry out the reactions of uh, 
this epoxy alcohol at this, uh, this or this center depending on uh, how the reaction can be uh, carried out. So uh, we will uh, look at one more example uh, in which uh, a very interesting diabon alcohol which is an analgesic has been prepared. So we take this uh, particular uh, uh, epoxy uh, uh, alcohol which uh, is derivatized to the corresponding O benzyl group now here that means we are starting from the corresponding uh, epoxide here and uh, basically converting into the O benzyl. Now this is not the same as uh, opening of the epoxy alcohols that we discussed so far. Here now sodium azide and ammonium chloride based reaction occurs at this center. So basically at this center here. So uh, it is not a terminal epoxide, but the opening of the epoxide is taking place in such a fashion that sterically less uh, hindered end of the epoxide uh, uh, is yeah, in the uh, reaction where the azide attacks. Now uh, this particular molecule of course we can then uh, carry out further transformations uh, by hydrolysis, by reduction and so on. And uh, another example is uh, um, epoxide of this type where we have already discussed how the epoxy alcohol uh, can uh, be uh, converted into uh, say for example if you have in this case like this how can we convert the epoxy alcohol of this type into a 1, 2 diol or 1, 3 diol. So if you recall the reduction part that I had discussed with uh, uh, using lithium aluminum hydride or uh, radal, uh, we can uh, allow the reaction to proceed in such a fashion that we get here say you have uh, one, uh, one, one particular position 2 and 3. So you have 1, 3 diol to form. So this is 1, 3 diol and that is happening because the epoxy alcohol under lithium aluminum halide condition this is what we are using it this is going to react negative charge will come in here and of course then uh, we have the, um, the hydride to attach in such a fashion that we can expect that the uh, opening of the uh, epoxide which is accompanied by reduction takes place because the um, uh, here we have we are basically trying to write a negative charge here O minus and this O minus then uh, will obviously react with the ALH uh, uh, 2 and H here and a negative charge here. So this is how it is now going to be uh, the intermediate and which attacks onto this carbon to form the corresponding diol here. So 1,3 diol is formed um, basically because of this uh, reduction taking place in a similar fashion that we had discussed earlier. Of course then we can uh, look at that the, 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 this particular alcohol here is a primary alcohol and this is a tertiary alcohol. So primary alcohol can be tosylated uh, so that we convert this into a tosylate as a leaving group and then the nucleophile from the dimethylamine will replace and then we can do the hydrochloride formation and this is what is called as Dalvin alcohol which is uh, an analgesic uh, uh, if its ester is used. So uh, basically we have a simple way of getting optically pure Darwin alcohol uh, from the uh, epoxy alcohol made from the, uh, a, a molecule which, uh, which is having a double bond here and of course we can carry out the epoxidation according to asymmet the asymmetric Sharpless method and followed by combining the uh, regioselective ring opening of the uh, epoxy alcohol with lithium aluminum hydride. So we will 
stop it uh, today at this stage and uh, discuss more aspects of uh, such asymmetric uh, uh, reactions in the next class till then bye and thank you. See you next time.